Hello everybody, this is Scott Salomon with Board Preppers and today I'm going to be talking about how to simplify concave versus convex rules. Now, generally speaking, this is not all that difficult, but it is very easily confused or mixed up. People flip them over, so I'm gonna show you an easy way to keep it straight so when you're getting ready for your board exam or on the board exam, you're able to uh, not let one of these simple questions get you mixed up. So, with that being said, the first thing we have to do is identify what is concave, what is convex, and I have some drawings on the board that we'll use. So here you'll see, let's just call it the uh, glenoid fossa and then the, the humerus. So every joint, when referring to con the concave or convex rule, has two surfaces involved. So we're gonna use this as an example. So the glenoid fossa is a concave surface, and the head of the humerus is a convex surface, right? So now that we got the generally cleared out, Let's then talk about the upper extremity versus lower extremity. And then in that case, really the upper extremity and the lower extremity are the same. So we don't need to really do both, we'll just do one. And because the upper extremity is here, I'll just use it. So the next thing we have to do is identify the joints. We have three of them and each has two surfaces, all right? The shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist, the hip, knee, ankle, they're the same as far as convex concave. So now let's look at it. The shoulder is made up of two surfaces. One of them is a glenoid fossa. We've already identified that as a concave surface, and we'll, we'll use an A just for simplification. And the head of the humerus is convex, where we'll use an X to represent that. And the elbow, the distal end of the humerus is convex. The proximal end of the forearm is concave. The distal end of the forearm, made up of the styloid, creates a concave surface, and then the cuboidal bones uh, of the carpals make up a convex surface. So there are your letters, right? Concave, convex, convex, concave, concave, convex. That's the pattern. It's the same for the lower extremity. So now let's just bring it over and set it up. So the board is going to take this now and apply it to open chain versus closed chain activities, right? So let's put open versus closed. Let's then transpose these letters into the two columns. AX, XA, AX. We'll do it again. AX, XA, AX. And now, open chain versus closed. Open chain says that the proximal end is fixed and the distal end is moving. Therefore, the moving bone makes the rule. In this case, the distal bone. So Distal, distal, distal. Now, the moving bone makes the rule, right? So in the closed chain, now the distal end becomes fixed and the proximal end becomes mobile. So now the proximal bone is making the rule. So here you go, shoulder, hip, open chain, convex, closed chain, convey, co uh, concave, elbow, and knee. Open chain, concave, closed chain, convex. Wrist and ankle, open chain, convex, closed chain, concave rule. That's how you do it. If it's just as simple as remembering AX, XA, AX, doing it twice, doing it like this, draw it on your whiteboards. They give you plenty of them. Set it off to the side. And then if the question ever presents itself, you have that easy access. You don't have to waste any extra energy trying to go through and keep it straight in your mind. You've already done it. Again, this is Scott Solomon with Board Preppers. I do appreciate your time. Um, I look forward. There's more of these coming out, so I look forward to speaking to you soon. Have a great day, and thanks again.